Hello, my friends. It's me again. A little while ago, we put out a mini-series covering a certain cult classic platformer game from the 90s, and the reception to that was really great. Normally, after we publish a game playthrough, we just move right on to the next one. But I'll be honest, I enjoyed running back through Kid Chameleon so much that I didn't want to just drop it right away. So, I prepared something a little different for you compared to our usual nonsense. Here's the deal. Kid Chameleon. Marvelous game. Very good. If you're new and don't know what this is, it's a 1990s Sega platformer for cool kids. Collect helmet power-ups. Transform into various guys with differing skills. Work through over a hundred brutal platforming levels without any way of saving. No, no, no. The key gameplay element comes from the helmet power-ups, which unlock a host of interesting new powers to move forward and defeat enemies with. But today, we're just going to focus on one of these helmets out of the nine that are available. His name is Micromax, and <laughs> look, look at him! He's just a small man! Being just a fly, Micromax is able to do, well, everything except fly, really. He can stick to walls and jump to climb up them, and his tiny height lets him squeeze through a lot of different places that any other character wouldn't be able to do. So, I had a little thought. Micromax is so versatile, he can go practically anywhere. Can he make it from start to finish all on his own? Well, Kid Chameleon is a very, very long game, and there's a lot of branching level paths and detours we can use to make it to the end. We'll look at each level I take on a regular run and assess, can Micromax clear them? If not, why not? Or can we reroute through some other levels to progress instead? If there are any unavoidable obstacles, we'll swap helmets to clear that obstacle and then re-equip Micromax's helmet as soon as we can. As the level branching gets more complex along the way, we'll have to carefully determine which level exits are safe and which will lead us to a dead end that Micromax can't clear on his own. I won't start begging you to hit any funny YouTube buttons immediately. Instead, just sit back and enjoy this special, different kind of video compared to what we usually put out here. And if you genuinely liked it once you're done, then that's good enough for me. Let's see if my stupid little idea actually pays off. We begin our long and what will most likely be a very painful journey at Blue Lake Woods. I saw this opening dozens of times when I was little, it really feels like home now. There is already one major problem though. We've got no helmet! In the vanilla game, we wouldn't be able to see Micromax for quite a while, but have no fear. With my mysterious powers of coding and game manipulation, I shall save this run by turning it into- no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding bro, we use Game Genie. We're Micromax now. Now, every helmet we find throughout this course of this game will turn us into Micromax, or replenish our hit points if we're already Micromax. Besides the little hiccup to get this challenge run going, there's really not much to say about this first level. I mean, come on. Blue Lake Woods is basically a playground to get used to the controls. It's in open air, with only a few enemies which are easily avoided. Blue Lake Woods 1 is an effortless first win. Onward to Blue Lake Woods 2. Only on the second level here, and it offers us an interesting feature. Normally, you're supposed to drop down this well and navigate an underground section before teleporting back up to the other side of this rock wall. But there's a secret here that we can exploit in order to skip the entire underground. What we've got here are some invisible blocks which, just like in Mario games, reveal themselves when hit from below. And these ones in particular fire bullets right towards that rock wall and break three or four of us. Even if we fell down this well, Micromax's unique wall sticking skill lets us climb right back out. The rest of the level is no problem to beat, although because Micromax is so small, I did struggle quite a bit trying to hit these hidden blocks right here for an extra life and extra continue coin. What can I say? I know they're there! Give them to me! Of course, with this game having such a niche following, I imagine everyone knows what special little cheat is waiting for us at the end of Blue Lake Woods 2, right? Rest assured, we're not going to do that cheat today. Although, if we did? Well, more on that later, I think. Let's keep going. With two forest levels out of the way, we move on to our first mountain-themed level, High Water Pass 1. It's only the third level, so surely it won't be too bad, right? You've got to be kidding. Well, here we are already, folks. Exhibit A, Giant Impassable Rock Wall. This might be the biggest run killer for poor Micromax, who has absolutely no way to get around this wall. 
In a vanilla run, this level is used to teach players about the Berserker Helmet, which is able to charge into walls like this to break through them sideways. But poor Micromax, he, he can't do anything of the sort. He is well and truly stuck. We begrudgingly take a moment to equip Berserker and move forward, adding our first obstacle to this, what I suppose is a minimum use run by now. Or I guess it's a maximum Micromax run? Micro Maximum? Wow, I really suck at this! Anyway, the rest of the level is actually very doable for our favorite fly. There are some other breakable walls for Berserker, but those just lead to extra prize blocks and secrets. There's also this very steep wall, which you would normally have to grab the Iron Knight helmet in order to use his power to climb up it. Vikorax's wall kicking is enough to solve this, and quite frankly, a better climbing mechanic. Finally, at the top of the mountain with open air, we continue on to High Water Pass 2. This next mountain level sees us doing the reverse of the one before it. We start at the mountain top and work our way down through to the bottom. Thankfully, this is entirely possible with Micromax, despite the number of disgustingly green, crawling hands waiting around in the level to grab at us. Get away from me! Now, this level is our first instance in this run, where there's a detour in the level layout. It gives us an opportunity to split off to an optional bonus level. And because the teleporter to do that is the first one we see, that's exactly what my pea brain decided we should do. We warp away to our first of many elsewhere levels. These are short bonus levels that bridge bigger levels together. Usually they can be shortcuts, but in this case it's just an extra filler level. It's easily beaten with just about any character really. Teleporting back out, we find ourselves in Underskull Mountain. Underskull Mountain is our first cave themed area, which features many delightful things such as lava that insta-kills you, and disembodied skulls that scream DIE over and over. Even with these home improvements trying to ruin our day, this level is still a lot of fun. The gimmick in Underskull Mountain 1 is to move down these steep slopes, then take a big jump over some spikes at the end. While Micromax's smaller size means he has a smaller jump height, we are still able to comfortably leap over each of these hazards and continue on to the goal. We even got to discover a special secret zone by using his special wall kick. Take a look at this. Oh, what is that? Oh, if you keep Cyclone, right? Is that what this is? Yep. Oh, have fun. So this is this is part of the... <laughs> Brothers, do you mind? Oh. This is part of the 100k trip. Uh, if you can get here as Cyclone and you've racked up enough score. Oh. Wait, you don't see... We haven't found those before, have we? The, the, the points blocks? That's cool. The 100k trip isn't something we were planning to try and do, but... It was nice to finally be able to get up to that secret room and nab all those points. Never done that before. Continuing on, we just barely save ourselves from a fiery death and hit the flag to move to the next level, Under Skull Mountain 2. This one might prove to be quite tricky because, oh, hey, wait, what's, what's this doing here? Well, that was easy. We've just sidetracked to a second elsewhere level, and this one is incredibly easy as well. We just jump across each platform here, and bounce up each layer until we reach the teleporter, going straight through to Underskull Mountain 3. The final area in this trilogy of dingy K levels has another similar gimmick, but this one proved to be a little bit more challenging than before. The goal here is to time a jump on these rising platforms, hit some bullet blocks to clear away to the next section, then rinse and repeat to the end. The problem is that some of the later platforms start rising from pretty high up, so Micromax needs to use a careful running start to make the height to make it onto these platforms. Needless to say, I'm a professional insect, and this level was still comfortably beaten. I even found a hidden continue coin in this- No, no, wait, no! Ah, oh, damn, I lost it. Moving on, we find ourselves at the Isle of the Lion Lord, a tropical island themed area featuring more than one Lion Lord and a possible case of false advertising. Despite the ferocious felines running all over the place, we carefully move through this tunnel and around to the peak of the island where the flag waits for us. The cliffs around here look like they could be used to skip the level by wall kicking, but we found any angle beyond a pure vertical wall was too much for Micromax. But that's no matter, the level is done. The next level is Hills of the Warrior 1, a calming, peaceful, Japanese fields themed area. Wait, why do I hear boss music? What the hell is that thing? Well, it sure would be nice to spend some sweet time in this level, but unfortunately we're being chased by a murder wall. This wall will relentlessly pursue us all the way to the flag, and even touching it just once results in instant death. It's a stressful time for Micromax, who cannot run very fast on the ground. 
but we discover that his speed after jumping is the same as any character's, so we make this fly start to act like a flea and hop for our lives! The one silver lining with this murder wall level is that the design of the level itself is meant for a generic chase area, so it doesn't have any special obstacles that Micromax wouldn't be able to deal with. We even got some nice value out of the wall kick at this point here to avoid needing the bounty block. And with that, we've escaped the murder wall and cleared Hills of the Warrior 1. Take that, stinky wall of instant death and doom! I really hope we don't have to deal with it later. Ooh. Our next stop is Hills of the Warrior 2, where we finally get to enjoy the sights and the greenery of this level theme. This level contains a lot of high rock walls that you'd normally need Berserker's charge ability to break through, but so far it seems to be no problem because we can just take the higher path here to get over them. Ah! Now this one is a problem. This rock wall, which I'm going to start dubbing these Berserker walls, stretches all the way to the level ceiling, and there's no way underneath it either. Thankfully, we passed by a teleporter on the lower route a little while back, so we'll backtrack and take that one to see if we can find a way to skip around this big level. Hey, we're in the big city! This is Elsewhere 3, and just like the two Elsewheres before it, it's no problem at all for Micromax. The only real hazards are these horrible, green, slimy, bogey things that waddle about. But they don't stop us reaching the way out of here. Oh, come on, really? Coming on out from Elsewhere 3, we arrive in the Windy City! I promise I won't do another rhyme again in this video. This level opens with a narrow room and a tank firing right towards us, but thankfully, these ceiling blocks here spring upwards each time you hit them, allowing us to carve a way out quickly and move forward. The rest of the level is surprisingly chill, and thanks to Micromax's wall-kicking power, we were even able to find some secret areas I would normally miss. Oh, that big sign saying run sure isn't ominous. The rest of the level takes us into the sewer, where the combined slippery ice blocks and pop-up drills in the floor indicate we should be careful with our speed. So it's a good thing Micromax's little legs mean we can move carefully here and skate to the flag with no issues. Our next appropriately themed level is the Sinister Sewers, and in the vanilla Kid Chameleon, this is actually the first time you would normally be able to find a Micromax helmet. Along with this level's theme being a great fit for a tiny fly, the platforms and walls here are practically designed for his skills. We make careful leaps and wall kicks all the way to the bottom of the sewer and check this level off our list as well. From here, we move to a scary snowy level theme. This is the Crystal Crags 1, and it introduces a new level mechanic that can make things quite hard for Micromax. When the background turns dark, it means a hailstorm is about to begin, and unfortunately, being hit by gigantic ice chunks that are bigger than you tends to cause a lot of damage. So we'll have to watch out for hail alongside finding a way to make it to the end, playing as our heroic bug friend. For the most part, this isn't a problem, as a lot of the mountainside in this level has underground tunnels used as a safe route forward. Unless you end up doing something like this. You're fucking joking, man. What? Oh, are you stuck? I slid and hit all the fuck- every single fucking one of those bullet oh. blocks on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! Well, that was embarrassing. It took me a few restarts, but we finally made it to the end section of this level. We have two ways out of here. We have a flag leading to the Crystal Crags 2, or a teleporter to Elsewhere 4. Hopefully at least one of these two exits won't be blocked off by a- Oh, for fuck's sake! Yep, that's right. They're both completely blocked off by Berserker Walls. What's even more frustrating, even for vanilla players, is that the Berserker Helmet weenie for this obstacle is in an invisible block nearby. I begrudgingly took up arms as a stupid horn monkey man again and broke through the wall to the flag. Then I dropped down to break the wall to the teleporter, before swiftly realizing my mistake. Spending so long as a funny little wall climbing bug means I forgot not every character is able to make this climb back up. There's no way back up to the tunnel that led us here, so it looks like we have to take our chances with Elsewhere 4. Luckily, there's a helmet in this hidden passage letting us quickly resume our challenge, and by some miracle, it looks like this Elsewhere level was designed to test wall climbing skills. Micromax scores another win, but not before scoring a secret continue coin hiding all the way up here. The Crystal Crags 2 doesn't feature any dangerous hail unlike his big brother, but unfortunately suffers from a similar impassable problem. About two thirds of the way through, we discover this monstrosity. Absolute unit of a rock wall. I'd say you know the drill by now, but actually you don't, because Berserker is nowhere to be found here. Instead, we must rely on Red Stealth, who I can only describe as the original Shovel Knight, to pick through the floor and break through to the other side. Trust me, I even tried using this secret route at the beginning to get underneath the wall by setting off these bullet blocks into the floor below, but it's all solid ceiling here. There's nothing besides a bonus. 
Besides that, this level is as good as over, and we even found a fresh Micromax helmet to use before reaching the flag. Moving on now to Dragon Spike, where the game officially tries to ramp up its intimidation factor by giving us blue dragons instead of green. Oh heavens, what are we going to do? Jump right over it. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Micromax has no time for fighting big lizards, he has like 50 more levels to clear at most. Dragon Spike is actually quite a short level and features both a flag and a teleporter as options to move forward, but to nobody's surprise, they're both blocked by our old favourite, Berserker Balls. Oh man, I'm starting to see some favouritism from the devs of a certain helmet now. As in the Crystal Crags one, we use Berserker to break this wall to the flag, and then backtrack to break this wall to the teleporter. Thankfully I kept an extra helmet around to turn back into Micromax and jump down this tunnel to try the teleporter. <laughs> well... <laughs> I swear, it's like, even when I'm using cheat codes for a self-imposed challenge, the devs still know exactly how to troll me and when. Let's try the other route. There's a cool looking structure here made of bullet blocks. When you set one off, it creates a domino effect, breaking down the entire structure bit by bit. What this means for us is that we can drop through the bridge down here onto... Oh, oh whoa. What, what, what is this? Where's the floor? This invisible floor, which may or may not cease to be a floor at any moment, <laughs> and backtrack to the teleporter. We'll use it as a detour to an optional level, the pinnacle. Now, if you saw me run through the game normally a while back, you might remember how much pain and suffering I went through trying to climb this insane mountain at the beginning. Thankfully, I'm wiser now. I'm stronger. More knowledgeable. You could say I've grown as a person, despite being the smallest character in the game right now. And with this newfound strength, climbing this cursed cliff becomes an effortless task, thank goodness! And that's where our level ends, because halfway back down we discover this rock floor! Remember, only red stealth can dig through this thing to progress. Time to backtrack to Dragon Spike and consider our other option. We're back at the end of Dragon Spike, next to this weird domino structure again, and the flag is behind yet another berserker wall. It truly seems quite hopeless. The number of impassable walls that's already been thrown at us makes the challenge look truly bleak, and we're only about a quarter of the way through it now. I don't want to be a fly on the wall, I want to be a fly past the wall. But then I noticed something very interesting. The bullet blocks in the structure. Some of them are lined up with the berserker wall. Maybe if we're clever, we can surgically remove some pieces of this domino line to redirect those bullets. With careful planning and timing how long we spend on this vanishing floor to not fall back down, I was able to find a solution. Two blocks was all we needed. Two stray bullets misfired towards that impassable wall and the one block gap it made is all Micromax needs to squeeze through and touch the flag. Incredible! Now, it's it's not exactly a miracle solution for this level by a long shot, as there was another berserker wall we broke through earlier, making it still impossible. But finding creative solutions to progress like this is what really makes these challenges fun. With my motivation restored, I touched the flag for the next level to see what interesting puzzles wait for us at Stormwalk Mountain. Yes sir, this level's an instant strikeout. We quite literally spawned into this tiny metal room, and you already know by now which helmet's waiting for us in that block up there. Maybe we should have done a berserker challenge instead, huh? After busting open the metal blocks, we quickly pick up another bug helmet and carefully navigate the rest of this level. It's filled with a lot of hazards, including drill box below and a hailstorm from above, but we're still able to go to the far right side and then start moving downward into more obstacles. For one, there's a singular rock block that you'd think we need red stealth to pick through, but there are cleverly designed bullet blocks in the wall over here that do the job for us. We also have the scary blue dragon from earlier in a narrow hallway, but Micromax's small size lets us time a precise jump onto the dragon's head and bounce past him. At the very end of the level is this maze-looking structure of more rock blocks, but thankfully the almighty troll game devs finally threw me a bone and left this one small gap to the flag open, which I wasted no time in squeezing through. We finally arrived at our first boss level in this marathon of a game, and the unofficial end to phase one out of the four. Now, Shishka boss looks intimidating, but it's completely possible to beat. All the bosses are, really. 
It's just a matter of jumping on their heads over and over and over and over. Even with this reassuring knowledge, I actually found this boss quite difficult. It was a combination of Micromax sticking to any wall I touch, as well as the front of the boss's faces not having collision for some reason. It made it quite hard to stay bouncing on the big bald craniums. Or maybe I'm just shit at Kid Chameleon, I don't know. Daniel found it hilarious though. Now, I know I said a minute ago that we're only about a quarter of the way done here, but that's not exactly the case. See, this first leg of the game hasn't had a lot of branching level paths we can use to skip chunks of the game, so we've been doing basically every level so far. But as we move forward, we're about to see a lot of teleports, skips, and weird level branches, letting us move through the game way faster. But with this being said, taking out the first boss is still a milestone, so let's have a little checkpoint here. How's Micromax done so far? Looks like a total of five impassable spots that he can't get through. High Water Pass 1, both levels of the Crystal Crags, Dragon Spike, and Stormwalk Mountain. Actually, counting it up like this makes our challenge seem way better than it felt while playing, and I have a feeling it's only going to get better moving forward. Let's keep going to the next leg of the game. Starting back up in a woods level might feel familiar, but the Whispering Woods 1 is a lot harder than the last woods we were in. This place also introduces new enemies, such as armadillos for some reason, and some even weirder stuff in even later levels. With this level acting as a fresh start after the boss, it's quite simple, and Micromax can clear it easily. Dropping down this well, we find ourselves in what I like to call the ultimate bouncy castle, and the flag waits for us in the open at the other end. There's also a teleporter hiding up here near the ceiling, but that only leads to a filler elsewhere level which the flag can skip entirely. So we progress down the normal route straight to the Whispering Woods 2. And well, if you thought we got off to a lucky start in the first Whispering Woods level, you were definitely onto something. This level features not one impassable obstacle, but two, both of different types and in different places. The first one is this huge deep tunnel of rock block, which could be picked through by Red Stealth, but is actually intended to be sat on by our obese metal friend Iron Knight. I'm not even touching the controller here, he's just that heavy. Look at him go! I backtracked for a spare helmet so we could play as much level as possible with Micromax, and the huge cliff on the other side here works out well because, like we saw a while ago, both he and Iron Knight are designed for climbing walls like this. But then we got stopped further on by this really tiny Berserker wall, and time was starting to run out too. So I grabbed Berserker here and accidentally caused Armadillo Roadkill in my quest for the flag. With only seconds to spare before dying to the timer, I grabbed yet another Micromax helmet and vaulted this wall to the flag. Man, if only they made Berserker available at the start of this level, then I probably would have just done this. Making it out of the woods for a second time, we land in Devil's Marsh 1. The swamp level theme is my favourite, so it's a shame if you don't see it in the game very often. Unfortunately, we get stopped short here very early on, as this level is designed for Red Stealth's digging skills and high jump. We've got no choice but to grab his helmet to get through the first few floors here, and then jump all the way back up to the next area before we can get ourselves a brand new bug hat. A little bit further on, I discovered this obstacle that made me stop and panic for a moment. See, I knew what was behind this rock wall. A teleporter leading elsewhere, which then leads on to Crab Cove. Not only is that a shortcut plus like three other levels, I knew for a fact they could all be cleared with Micromax. But I couldn't get there. Instead, I had to reroute down to this teleporter, which keeps us on the main path via a different elsewhere filler. And so, our time at Devil's Marsh gets cut short for now. Yo, he's Tweedledee and Tweedledum once again. Well, you heard my brother. I'm not sure why Tweedledee and Tweedledum are up in the mountains, but by a miracle, this elsewhere is a straight vertical climb to the end. That's perfect for Micromax. Just gotta escape before the blizzard kicks in, and we arrive... straight back in the swamp? We're in Devil's Marsh 2 now, and while most of this level is open for Micromax to clear, the biggest obstacle is how easy it is to get crushed by the moving platforms. I'm not afraid to admit that happened to me a couple of times, but regardless, Funny Bugman has no issues making it to the end here. As much as I've enjoyed the grimy green aesthetics here, it's time to move forward. Landing at Knight's Isle, I sense this level ending up being a coin toss on whether the fly could beat it or not. It's obviously named after Iron Knight, so it's either going to feature large walls we can climb up with no problem, or deep rock floors we won't be able to break through. Well, luckily for us, it ended up being the first. 
Micromax can bounce past all these climbable totem poles at speeds Iron Knight can only dream of. They even put some of the rock floors in I mentioned, but those are just funny traps designed to catch fat people in metal armor. Micromax laughs all the way to the flag here, encased in a small room we can easily teleport into. Next stop is Whale Grotto, and I'm not sure why it's named that because whatever these things are sure look like killer whales but are a whole different species of just plain fucking weird. This level is thankfully quite open, so I did my best to hop between totem poles to the far end of the level, which teleports us to the second half placed right above the cave we were in. Unfortunately, that also means there are holes in the floor which, if we're not careful, causes this to happen. <laughs> See you later, bro. buddy. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. That was kind of funny, but not so big of a deal, because we can just loop back around again and finish off this level properly. Another level down for Micromax, and funnily enough, that's everything I was hoping to have skipped from Devil's Marsh. Guess we didn't need that other teleport after all. Our next stop is Hoverboard Beach. This level is supposed to introduce a cool helmet named Skycutter, who can flip gravity upside down and skate really fast at the cost of being two tiles wide. Well, isn't it funny that I can just do this instead? Oh, do you see what I mean now? He's so versatile. He does whatever he wants. Micromax spits in the face of Hoverboard Beach, and we move on to the dangerous Pyramids of Peril. Here's a fun little bit. This is the only level in our challenge run with the desert theme, so enjoy it while you can. Even though this place isn't designed for Micromax, there are some of his helmets scattered around this level in the vanilla game, so it's most likely possible we can beat it with him, right? Right? Well that sucks, doesn't it, fellas? We've got another big ol' rock floor for Iron Knight here, and I tried looking around this area for a path through the wall, but sadly we have no choice but to swap helmets here and break through. What's even worse is that there's no way to climb back up to become a bug again, because the right wall is against the level border, and the flag is sitting against the left wall. We're moving on to the next level without Micromax, so hopefully we can find a helmet block quickly. Thankfully, Mad Maze Mountain comes through for us by dropping a helmet block just above our head at the beginning, so we can properly explore this area using the official bug method. I took some time to find every exit in this level, because there's three in total, and they all lead to different places. The first teleporter I found leads to the Forbidden Tombs, a desert level which, to be plain about it, really sucks. I went through that level in my original run a while back, so I know for a fact it contains a ton of both berserker walls and rock floors to dig through as red stealth, so it's a definite no-go. I was also able to make it up to the flag at the far end of the level, shortly after setting off this absolute death trap here. But this flag may as well have no bug zone written on it too. The flag leads to the Deadly Skyscrapers, and while that level can certainly be beaten as Micromax, it leads on further to Sky Dragon Castle 1 and 2, which are both gimmicky levels designed to only be possible by flying around with a Cyclone Helmet. That leaves us with one final option, a shortcut off the main path and into Stairway to Oblivion. Good thing for us that the second teleport is the easiest one to get to, right? Look, look how easy this was. And it's done, just like that. Moving down these Oblivion flavoured stairs, I thought we'd be in for a comfy time, but this time there's a double dose berserker wall here. One layer of rock, the next of metal. Feels like it needs a layer of icing to go on top as well, right? Maybe a cherry? We backtrack a little way and use berserker to bust this wall down, and find the rest of the level is actually designed for Micromax. Now, just like in Mad Maze Mountain, there are three exits out of here. One exit drops us into the Deadly Skyscrapers, which we're trying to avoid. Another leads us to a dead end elsewhere level that would only send us right back here, so that's pointless. The third teleporter is our target, a huge shortcut all the way to Coral Blade Grotto, and it's sitting just up here, where Little Bugman can easily walk it up to it. Let's go back to the beach! We've got to beat Coral Blade Grotto in order to move on with the game, so I was a little concerned when I dropped in and found this huge floor of rock blocks. I thought we'd have to switch helmets to drop through here for sure, but for some reason there's this secret path through the cliff face we can use to skip the area. After that point, the rest of the level is entirely possible as Micromax. There's just a few ceilings we need to break up through and some vanishing bridges to run across, but the flag waits in the open for us at the bottom of this cave. Although the huge number of downright creepy enemies waddling about in this area makes me want to evacuate much faster than usual. Bet you weren't expecting the second boss this quickly, huh? 
It's just like I said, now the levels are beginning to branch off a lot more, it gives us room to skip over so many places. Now, there's no prizes for guessing why this level is named Boomerang Bosses, but what's also different is that now each head moves around freely by itself, instead of being stacked together on a pole. That gives us more choice in which head we want to fight at any time, and with fewer projectiles being spat out at once, I found this boss to overall be a bit easier than the last one. As I said a while ago, Micromax, along with any other helmet, can beat every boss in the game, because all it takes is jumping on their heads. So after a pretty long but exciting battle, I pop all three heads one by one and take the flag, marking the official halfway point of Kid Chameleon. Don't worry, we're realistically much more than halfway through by now. But let's take another checkpoint here to see how Micromax has done up until now. Only four obstacles in this section? That's a little bit better than the five we had to deal with in stage one. I have a feeling we're not going to see many more things like Berserker Walls anymore. We've started to have so much more choice in which levels to visit, and as the levels get harder, they'll try to make us rely on more complex helmets like Skycutter or Cyclone. Let's keep going. Hmm, getting a bit of deja vu now. We've got yet another fresh start in a Woods-themed level, but seeing it named Woods of Despair makes me a bit nervous what's to come. As with most other Woods levels we've been to, this one is pretty much all open air, so Micromax should have no problem getting where he needs to go. This drill obstacle looks like we need to get a precise jump onto the rubber block to succeed, but Micromax can climb around the edge here, and then we only need to thread the needle through here to reach the flag. Oh, God damn it! There we are! Second try is good enough. To the next level! Well, this is the part where Woods of Despair becomes the more fitting name, because loading into Woods of Despair 2, we find ourselves in an absolute fucking battleground. This level looks like it was inspired by Endor from Return of the Jedi, what with all these walking robots and lasers all over the place. The original intent for this level was to take either the hoverboard or the tank, and blitz your way across all these really long bridges. So for Micromax and his tiny buggy legs, it's more like an enemy gauntlet. This took me a good few tries, but after dodging countless alien gunshots, I made it to the safety of this tunnel by the flag. However, the flag isn't our goal here. It would take us to this level, Forced Entry. Do you remember that murder wall from all the way near the beginning? <coughs> yeah, I was hoping we could avoid seeing that thing again at any cost. And luckily for us, we can. At the end of this low tunnel is a hidden drop in the floor to a shortcut level, the Valley of Life. That sounds like a nice place to be. Let's go find out. Bro, what do you mean by this? This is the Valley of Spikes and Death! Well, after bracing ourselves for another go at this level, we're able to make this quick jump to safety. The Valley of Life is... kind of weird. There are spike pits all over the ground, and trails of ghost blocks in the sky that did a good job humbling me and my platforming skills. Brother has not learnt the pattern, has he? No, I really <laughs> didn't learn the pattern. Bro! Figure it out, oh my god! Choosing to move forwards instead, I found this classic obstacle in the hillside that I thought might cause us a problem. But the flag isn't actually behind here at all. It's all the way up at the top of the cliff, and for once we got to use a berserker wall to our advantage by climbing. We quite literally make it up and out from the valley of life and ascend to the next level. Oh, that, that doesn't sound like fun. Well, it isn't too bad here actually. The Black Pit is a really long sideways level with no space going up, so you essentially get to choose the high or low path to reach the end. I chose the lower path because, well, I was already down here, and although these scary blue gentlemen and rising lava look hard to deal with, this was actually a really fun little challenge. At the far end of the level is another domino structure of bullet blocks, kind of like what we saw way back at Dragon Spike, except the bullet to trigger the whole domino is way up out of reach for Bugman so I had to carefully take the structure apart from these bullets in the top row. The problem was, I only had one hit point left, Bruh. so I couldn't afford to let even one stray bullet hit me or it was over. After a good few tries, and failures, I took the whole structure down and opened the way to the teleport out of here. Here at Lion's Den, we meet the very angry cousins of the guys from Isle of the Lion Lord, as well as the even angrier green orbs they fling at us. Yeah, this level is certainly beatable with Micromax, but it's still pretty hard. After a lot of time dodging or jumping on big lions and moving to the right, we reach the end of the level. The flag is just beyond these steep cliffs, which look like they'd normally need someone like Red Stealth to climb up, but curiosity took over as I tried to see how deep it went. 
<laughs> Someone flew a little too close to the sun, didn't they, Icarus? Oh boy, that's hilarious! I sure can't wait to do the entire level again! There we go, moving on. Oh dear, Wind Castles 1. This is a sky-themed level with small floating islands, and as much as we and our bug friend enjoy open-air levels, these ones are a little too open-air. Most sky levels are designed to just be flown through as Cyclone, and Micromax still can't jump very high without help from walls to stick to. However, if we're careful, at least one exit here is possible for Micromax anyway. I jumped and climbed to the right looking for a teleporter to a filler elsewhere level, and discovered this. This one singular prize block is the only stepping stone we have to reach the way out, and if anything happens to it, then Micromax is toast, so I better be careful. Oh no, why? After a quick restart, I made it back here, took even more care to climb on top of the block, and made it successfully to our target. We teleport off the main track into Elsewhere. This Elsewhere is an easy run to the finish, and there's not much else to say about it. It introduces these ninja enemies for the first time, which tried to catch me off guard by jumping when I jumped. That was pretty annoying, but if you jump while standing still, then move in midair, it stops them doing that. We go on to Wind Castles 2. Well, this level was another highlight from the playthrough we put up on the channel a while ago. So much wacky stuff goes on here. Dragons getting dropped on your head, invisible troll blocks, and also this disgusting maze of bullet blocks. Of course, the intrusive thoughts took over again, and I made a leap of faith. Oh no. Yeah. Intrusive thoughts, <laughs> intrusive <laughs> thoughts. Now look, you, you can't blame me for trying. Besides that ridiculous blunder, it's entirely possible for Micromax to leap between and climb up all the buildings here, if not made pretty hard by how many dragons are flapping about. Through this hidden gap in the wall, we move on to Blizzard Mountain. After all the nonsense we've endured from past levels, Blizzard Mountain felt like a real breath of fresh air. See, this level is actually designed for Micromax, with big walls to climb and tiny tunnels to squeeze through. Because it's specifically made for the little man, there's little else to touch on. Towards the end of the level, we find this rock wall with bullets behind it, but dropping into this hole reveals a secret path to get underneath and break it down from the other side. Now, there's once again two ways out of here, a flag to Caves of Ice and a teleporter to Frosty Doom. But anyone who's familiar with Kid Chameleon's level layouts knows that Frosty Doom is the one level above all that needs to be avoided. Not because of Frosty Doom itself, but the level that comes right after. Oh man, I'm getting chills just thinking about that place. Get me to that flag right now! We continue our mission at Caves of Ice, and dropping into the level, I met with this terrifying sight. Rock floor, all the way across the room. Solid wall up to the right. There's no way this level is a dead end. I have to find a way out of here. I can't afford to backtrack to Bloody Swamp! But it seemed like the almighty gods that are the Kid Chameleon devs heard my pleas, and by climbing up the wall over here, I discovered a hidden passage through it. That's truly, honestly incredible. The rest of the level can be done, just because of this tiny little gap. Taking this huge blessing into account, I started my descent way, way down into the depths of this level. After that was a very long climb back up, which you'd normally need to make use of these rubber blocks and elevators to do, but Micromax is truly in his element here. This entire level would have been really tough without him, but a quick and easy wall climb up to the flag lets us carry on to the Nightmare Peaks 1. Despite the name, this level is really everything but a nightmare. It's another official Micromax designed level, with a generous amount of wall climbing and hidden tunnels to be enjoyed here. A long way up this mountain is this huge row of teleporters that all send you back to the beginning, so I thought just by quickly running across each of them, I'd avoid setting any one of them off. Oh! <laughs> it's not fucking fair, man. They're all different ones. Oh, man. That's funny. <laughs> well, that's just not fair, is it? Not really a huge problem because this level has been a whole lot of fun so far, and only with minimal extra effort do we make it to the very top of the mountain. Look, the flag is right behind this wall. I can practically taste it. I don't want to go all the way back down there to get to it. While furiously batting myself against the wall like any real fly does, 
I started to notice something weird with the wall texture at the top here. Looks like it's on the wrong sprite layer. It's laid over the top of Micromax. But then, I went right through. This is another clever secret hole in the wall, and I was even more grateful for it. By touching the flag, we can even see that it's intentional, because the hologram blocks that make up each level's terrain has one missing up by the ceiling. Micromax is doing great. Will we do just as well in the next level? Here we're at the Nightmare Peaks 2. This level's a bit more difficult. There's a load of red herring pathways in this level that either lead in circles or teleport you to the beginning again. But I remembered all this from my vanilla run from before. The true and real path actually involves a secret passage through the ceiling up here that you're supposed to fly up through with Cyclone, but Funny Bugman doesn't use his wings for such nonsense. We can time jumping up and wall kicking past these drill blocks when they're not sticking out, then fumble our way around inside the wall to climb up and out the other side. There's a hailstorm about to kick in, but the flag is only a short hop away from where we're standing. Another level down for Micromax. Oh, that is the third boss. That is the title card for Bagel Brothers, the third out of four boss levels in the marathon platformer Kid Chameleon. It's a little boring that we stayed on the main path the whole time, but we really did just manage to get all the way through stage three without ever switching helmets. Well, you know the drill by now. Floating heads suck and Micromax can jump on top of them 30 times each to win. Let's get started. There's very little to say about this boss fight, really. There was this really funny section where the head near the bottom kept zooming left and right so fast that his eyes couldn't keep up with him. I wonder if I tricked the boss AI into doing that? Either way, these silly men didn't learn from last time not to stay near low ceilings, and after a couple of trampolining sessions, all three of them were toast. Micromax strolls up to the level exit with the exaggerated swagger of a small bug, and we move on to the final leg of the game. We've come so far now! Diamond Edge is the first level after the boss here, and while it's nice to finally be somewhere that isn't just the woods again, maybe I should have been careful what I wished for. This is another pretty hard level with plenty of fast-moving tanks and pop-out drills which you'd normally get to race past with Skycutter, so it becomes another dangerous marathon jog for poor Micromax. This row of metal blocks here has pop-up drills that we'd have to jump all the way over, but for some reason two in the middle don't have, which would have created a safe path if I didn't suck at basic platforming. A little way down this next tunnel, and we come across a teleport to the second half of this level. Now, Diamond Edge is a weird level in that it doesn't actually feature an end flag, but rather a bunch of teleporters that lead out to five different areas. It's really easy to take the wrong teleporter here and get lost if you don't know where you're going, and for our challenge, it's crucial that we go down a very bug-friendly path so we can proceed forward. So let's have a look and find out which exits are viable. What about the elsewhere levels at the top and bottom? Well, they don't actually lead anywhere different, they're just fillers, so we'll ignore those. We could say the same about Scorpion Isle, too. It's just a filler level we can skip right past. Then what about Towers of Blood? No good. Towers of Blood is beatable with Micromax, but going this way means we'd have to go through Alien Twilight, which is a dead end with these rock floors down here. That leaves us with only one practical option. Survive all the way to the far end of the level and teleport straight through to The Hills Have Eyes. Yeah, I know it's boring, but at least it means we won't get lost, right? After surviving deadly thunderclouds, more tanks, and even the rapidly shrinking timer, we make it all the way to the far end and take one giant leap for bug kind into the next level. The Hills Have Eyes is another rolling hill themed area, which we're going to see quite a lot of in the next few levels, I think. The above ground section is an easy clear, as long as you're quick enough to dive past all the enemies. There's a tall wall further in, but our special wall sticking skills let us climb right over it. Dropping down into the tunnel, we need to move back down to the left, which would normally involve awkwardly crawling under these sliding pillars, but Micromax's height lets us casually run underneath and save some time. The teleporter forward is on the other side of this fake wall, and we move onward with no trouble at all. The next level is named Secrets in the Rocks, and loading in, I nearly had a scary flashback to the Berserker walls that plagued us so often at the start of this run. This time though, we've been truly blessed. You see those metal blocks up in the ceiling? They allow Micromax, and ONLY Micromax, to bypass this area and take an alternative route out of here. There are some pop-out drills that do make it quite hard to get in without taking any damage, but I had enough hit points to survive that anyway. I honestly felt so blessed that the devs had gone away with their normal trolls and pranks to give me this bonus path. And then this happened. Okay, here we are. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's really mean. Who put that there? I genuinely couldn't believe they pulled that on me after I let my guard down. I was actually impressed. Anyway, the rest of the level is a difficult trek, but still possible. It seems that in the late game there's a lot more emphasis on just pure enemy count. So after finding a way around this blue dragon jamboree, we proceed to the later area. There's a series of columns here that seem designed for Micromax to climb up and break through, so after some effort, I found the right way through this mini maze and finally made it to an actual flag. Didn't realise how much I'd missed seeing flags. I don't feel lost anymore, they really help you feel like you've hit a good milestone in the game, don't they? Moving to the next level, and I swear these level names are just getting weirder and weirder, we're at Ice God's Vengeance. This is a really difficult level, and though most of it is designed specifically for our buggy boy to get through, it's quite hard even getting up to that section. It is a huge upward climb, featuring slimes that shoot bullets, tanks that shoot bullets, spikes that don't shoot bullets, even those funny skulls came back with a bright red paint job to ruin our fun. Despite all these ridiculous challenges, we made the successful climb to the top here and even aced this maze sections with the weird mushroom blocks in it. The final obstacle is another set of columns with teleporters at the end, but the catch is that only one of them actually works as an exit, the rest will send you right back down to the start. But because I've been through this level before, I knew exactly where I was going. We teleport out and move to Beneath the Twisted Hills. This is another Rolling Hills level, just like I mentioned we'd see a lot of earlier. Despite the name, we start off very much above ground again, and on a pretty smooth plane. I've been pleasantly surprised just how much of these late game levels have been beatable with Micromax, although we have skipped quite a chunk of them by being careful on which level X is to take. We're still going really strong, and that continues well into this level as we break down this set of walls and venture underground. There are a lot of stray tanks around the tunnels down here that need quick reflexes to stay away from, and even this pretty unfairly placed boy that I simply couldn't get the timing to jump past. At the end of this stage is this bullet blocked timed puzzle. It fires off a chain of bullets all the way back to the level surface, which then breaks down a huge wall leading to the flag. After I accidentally set it off too early, we had a bit of a panic moment here. Oh, 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 Micromax conquers one more level out of so many so far, although I can tell you I am not looking forward to what's coming next. Yep, here it is. I was dreading this level since the beginning. Alien Isle is truly awful, and I think we're going to need some luck to get through this. The level gimmick is to scale a load of walls to reach the end, which obviously is made trivial by Micromax, but there's a massive thorn in our side. There are UFOs everywhere, and if they get above your head, they will rain fire down constantly and won't ever leave you alone. In my vanilla run I did a couple of months ago, this level was an utter nightmare for me. It took so many tries. But this time, I have a little trick up my sleeve. So, did you notice a while back I would stopped collecting diamonds? If you're not familiar with this game, then you might be wondering why that happened, or even what the diamonds are for. See, each character has a special ability that's used by spending diamonds you've collected. These can range from things like force fields, projectiles, Iron Knight can even grant himself an extra hit point. And for our boy Micromax, spending diamonds will summon a homing snake that flies around and wipes out any enemy on screen. Check this out. Powers. <laughs> Uh. And this is what I was I... saving my fucking diamonds for. Does it just stay with you forever? Well, yeah, it like homes in on enemies if they're close. Look, what's this? He's gone, oh, he's been ruined. Oh. It's gonna get him uh -oh. as well, look. He's gone. Alien Isle is utterly conquered with help from those diamonds. I've been saving them all this time just to get sweet revenge on this level. Micromax wins again, onward to the land below. This is our final hills level, and as a bit of a weird contrast, there's no hills at all here. It's only one screen high. Being basically at the end game, this level is also filled with bullet block death traps and difficult enemies like jumping ninjas and these scorpion things which I still don't know how to beat. There's a long tunnel through here which serves like a choke point for a lot of enemies to chase you down and at the end is a bridge setup that breaks away behind you if you're not careful. And poor Micromax is uh, a bit too slow for that. No, no, no! <laughs> <laughs> Well, after that funny blunder, I took more care not to dismantle the bridge and reach this fork in the road. This is a crucial choice to deal with, because if you take the top path, 
you can go straight to the flag and move on quickly. But if you're unlucky and fall down here, invisible troll blocks stop you going back up, and our only choice would be to take a teleporter through a bunch of nasty filler levels. However, in my ridiculous quest to prove Grand Insect skills and wisdom, I've learned many things, and one of those things is called the Art of Baiting Out Idiotic Green Hands. With that enemy out of the way, and after performing some wacky jumping maneuvers over these bullets and a scorpion, we can, sort of safely, skate on down to the flag. That's one more in the bag for Micromax. We've finally done it. This is finally the final level. In the final portion of this game, we've finally reached the final marathon. True to its name, this is the last regular level before the end boss, and it's going to be our toughest challenge yet. No teleporters, no funny side routes, just a clean, narrow stretch of platforming from here to the end. Don't forget as well, ever since Stairway to Oblivion, which was over half the entire game ago now, we've never had a roadblock to switch helmets. Micromax has come so far, entirely on his own. Can we really beat this terrible gauntlet? It's only one screen high again, but a whopping 25 screens forward of just pure hell. This time, for this final level, I think I'm going to sit back and let you see the live gameplay recordings that me and Daniel took. Please enjoy. Of course, we are here with one hit point. No, I'm going to take this. Never mind, I'm going to take this. Oh, yeah, no it's, no, it's that one, remember? Okay, here we go. Is it po okay? Is it possible? <laughs> yeet! Come on, yeet yourself. You can make that. Oh, hello. Whoa. Monkeys! Whoa. Monkeys! There's monkeys! Monkeys! Are they actually called monkeys, or are you just calling them monkeys? I just call them monkeys. So they have long arms, and they make ah! noises like monkeys do. You know what they look like? They look like that Pokemon. What fucking Pokemon? There's a lot of them. The one that's like a rock ball, but with arms oh, that walks uh, yeah, fists. Yeah, yeah, obviously that one, because I know the name, that's why I called it the Pokemon. Oh, you did it again! You Matrix jumped! <laughs> nice. Little, you, you dipped between them. Little bug man goes where he pleases. Unless it's in the pit. Oh. Hell yeah. <laughs> Wait, oh no, there's a hole up there, isn't there? Oh no, it's the monkeys in the pit. The pit monkeys, I remember. Do you know what would be even worse if, if those platforms actually fell when you touched them, like Green Hill Zone ones? Yeah. It's really weird that these monkeys, like, they can just survive. That's a bottomless pit, but they just, like, climb right into it. Like, they sit comfortably in there. That's weird, isn't it? <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, I called it! <laughs> I called it. Whoop! There are clock power up. These. Oh, there is. There's also one. a power up, isn't there? I think this one's a power up. Yeah, hold on. Red stealth. Oh no, it's uh. Oh, helmet. it's monkey time! Ow! They just what are they doing? They just monkeying around? Oh, they really are monkeying around. Oh! I want this whale out of here. Nice. Run! There's so many monkeys. Run! There's so Bobby, many monkeys. Run! Uh oh. Whoa! There's so many monkeys. He's stuck in the floor, though. He's stuck, he's stuck. Whoop, whoop. This is so much easier. <laughs> right, we're having a good time. Uh, well, sort of, you're, you're about to perish. Is there a power up up there? There probably isn't, is there? Do it again now. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Oh no! Oh no! I, I, you have not come this far to get stopped by this. There's oh, no, no. We've been carrying this fucking hat since like halfway through the game. You're not. <laughs> I've got. I've got to. No, up. you're gonna have to. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can do it, boys. Yeah, you heard it right. After all that effort, this one chasm at the end of the level is what stands in our way. The bullets hit and break the bridge too quickly to run across it. The only helmet who can outrun that really is Skycutter on his hoverboard, or Cyclone can skip it by flying over. Micromax is just too small and too slow. We tried everything here. We tried kicking off the inside wall to make distance. We tried running and jumping at the last possible moment. 
We tried setting off only half the bullets, so we still had the other half to walk across. All of these are no good. None of it was working. After all this time and so many levels, was this really the thing to stand in our way and stop Micromex? At the very end of the level too? We lost our hope. And then I remembered something. Something that, to anyone else, might be quite bad. But for us, it was the key to victory. I've had an idea. Yeah? Look at him. Yeah, what, what about him? What, what were we literally talking about earlier? I don't know what. What's so special about this monkey? He's uh, got arms. He can he can jump into oh, pits. Yeah, he can. Oh my <gasps> god! Can we can we oh. bait can we bait the monkey into the pit and then jump on him? Yes, that's that, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Now I have no idea why they do that, but those stupid hopping orange things were gonna be our ticket to the end of the level. Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly demonstrate to you what I call monkey manipulation trick. Speedrunners will despise me for generations after this trick becomes mainstream. All we need to do is set off the chasm blocks, then bait one of those hopping monkey things into the pit. He'll be our living, breathing stepping stone to bounce all the way over to the other side. It took a few tries to get him into position, but eventually our new favourite video game enemy jumped into the right place, and this is how it went. Here we go, here we go, right, this is, so there's two attempts, you can do it when he's there in the bottom of the pit, far across, or you can do it at the peak of his jump. I'm going now! Like there. Oh, yes! Yes! He did it! Yes, he he did it! Okay, go, find a clock, go and find a clock. Oh, oh what an insane <laughs> play, biggest brain moment ever. You'd better believe that we were popping off after pulling off a stupid stunt like that. I never expected going into this that the rest of this run would be saved by one of these little bastards. With our hopes and spirits restored, and little other obstacles between us and the flag, we scrambled to reach it and cleared the final marathon on a great note. You best believe we deserve that extra life for that huge brain play we just pulled off back there. And that's honestly about it for the challenge. In Plethora, we defeat the end boss, but just like every boss before it, all it takes is jumping on his head enough times. The boss arena is wide open for any helmet to do well in, and they even left a secret Micromax helmet in a hidden block for us to use. Our heroic bug friend struggles against the boss here, and all the mini heads he shoots that tried to home in on us, but after a tough battle, we pop out all his eyes and declare the run over. Kid Chameleon is beaten. It's finally done. So, what do you think? This challenge was a lot of fun for me to pull off, in a classic video game I've loved since I was barely older than a toddler. Of course, that's sort of what we get up to on console classics, isn't it? Playing games we played as kids, now grown up with a fresh take. Anyway, while the credits are rolling, let's have a look at our map again. What path did we take? Well, we skipped quite a lot of places out, but I guess that's part of the goals of the challenge, right? Get Micromax to the end, whatever the cost. Five impossible obstacles in phase one, four in phase two, and absolutely nothing standing in our way for the entire second half. I'd say that's a pretty good result, no? So, the final question then. Can you beat Kid Chameleon as only Micromax? The answer is... Maybe. What the fuck do you mean, maybe? We just played the entire thing. You've got it written down that it's not possible right from level three. Yeah, I, I, look, I know, I know, you're completely right, but we don't actually have to visit level three, do we? Uh, uh, oh yeah. Are you... Are you thinking of the thing? Yeah, I'm thinking of the thing. Okay, all right. Um, Do you want to go back and... Should we wind it back and have a, have a little look at that, shall we? Do you think? I think we're better. You guys remember when I touched on a certain cheat code at this early point in the run, and then said I'd talk about it later? Well, here we are. The devs left a secret cheat code in the game where, as long as you line everything up, lets us walk from Blue Lake Woods 2 straight into Plethora. Well, that's only three levels then, and Micromax can do all of them, right? So, all we need to do is jump onto this block, hold the D-pad down, hold the B button down, and then move right. 
that's what all the strategy guides would tell you back in the day. So let's see. But that makes no sense. Why won't it work? Well, the guides weren't specific on what's actually going on here. See, the warp activates when the player is standing on exact pixel coordinates in the level, while holding down and B. For any character that's crawling, that makes them long enough to shift off the edge of the block and hit the warp trigger. But Micromax can't crawl. He's too short. And because of that, we realise that he falls down off the block too early before he can walk into the position to warp away. So then, he can't do the plethora cheat? Well, that's what I've been wondering as well. I was so curious about it that I even started learning a few TAS tools to make things line up. If you don't know what TAS is, it's a thing where experts use tools such as save states, frame advancing, and computer-aided inputs to make insane gameplay videos like speedruns, and other things that are usually completely impossible for any human to do on their controller. So I wondered if I could use TAS inputs to make Micromax jump off the block into the warp position, but so far I haven't been able to do it. And that's where I leave things with you lovely people watching. If, perhaps, there are any experts on Kid Chameleon among us, or perhaps anyone who's just familiar with Tool Assist's speedrunning, could you help a guy out? I'm sure we can get the cheat working for Micromax, but I'm really not sure yet. I need you to help me teleport this bug. Hey, uh, sorry for the weird conclusion and nerd ramble at the end there. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching. I know this one was a long time coming, and I am sorry it took a while, but it's literally just me and my brother running the show on this channel, and there's been a lot of work to do. So, big thanks for your patience. I hope you really enjoyed this challenge like I enjoyed playing it. Seriously, I don't think anyone's ever done a challenge run for Kid Chameleon before. Maybe some other guys will have a look at this game because of that? But anyway, if you thought this video was pretty cool, giving it a like, a funny subscribe button, or even just sharing your thoughts in the comments will go a long way for us. We read them all, and it, we really appreciate it. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and to see you again in our regular videos. See ya!